Hello and welcome to part 4 of the GNU Blot tutorial where we are going to learn how to create animated GIFs like the one shown on screen. That shows the daily temperature curve over the course of a year in Boulder, Colorado animated in GNU Plot. Now I would like to start out with a more simple example though. I would like to animate a little wave function in GNU Plot. So we're going to define a function that depends on x and t and just go with sine of x minus t and I want to animate this in a gif file so there's a gif terminal that we now call and if you want an animated gif it's important to include that keyword animate otherwise you just get a static image and then you can use the command delay and specify the duration of each frame in one hundredths of a second. So the default option here is 5 which would give a frame rate of 20 frames per second. I'm going to go with 4 so I want 25 frames per second. Now I'm going to set an output file and I'm also going to change the X range and the Y range because I already tested it and I didn't like how it looked otherwise. Alright, and then we're just going to plot our GIF. Now a GIF is just a collection of images played one after each other, so we have to create these images one after each other and write them all to that single file. Now this is done by the do command, so we write do for and then we set a counting variable, Let's just call it i, start it at 1 and go up to 96. So we have 96 frames in our GIF. Then you write the curly brackets and the plot command and I'm plotting f of x and I want to use this counting variable i in place of my time variable. So I can just write i times 0 0.1 and what that does is it increments the time by 0 0.1 for each frame. And we can just plot that, it takes a few seconds, and if we have a look at the file, we see that it's in fact an animated wave. If you look at it closely, you see that it looks a little blocky, and this is due to the sample rate being too low. So I think the default sample rate is 100. So what we can do is we can set samples to 100. So that should increase the resolution. Then we set another output file and you can see on the screen it says end of animation sequence and that means that if we now repeat the plot command we won't get another animated GIF. We have to set the terminal and include this animate command once more. Now we will get an animated GIF. So we just repeat the plot command and if we have a look at the result, we now see that the wave is a lot smoother. So whenever your curves appear blocky, just increase the samples variable and that should usually fix it. So that's it with this simple example. Now to something a little more involved. I went to this website here where you can find a lot of uh, weather and climate data. So they ask you to uh, quote these people or this publication if you make use of this data, so there you go. Uh, but the data is free to use and there's actually a lot of it. So I went in the sub-hourly directory and I picked 2018 and then I just downloaded the data set for Boulder, Colorado for no specific reason. I've never been to Colorado, but I had to pick one. And that data set looks something like this. So you have the date, you have the time of the day, so it just increments in minutes until it hits 55 and then it's 1, 105 and so on. And you have a lot of weather data, uh, but I only cared about the temperature in Celsius. So that's this column here. So I cut everything out from the data file, which was kind of cumbersome. There were also a few false readings in the temperature column. So there were a few values that were something like 9,999. So I deleted those and I stripped everything down until it looked like this. 
So here I have my minutes and here I have my temperature in degrees Celsius. And note that after 55 it doesn't jump to 100 but it goes on as 60. So I'm just counting the minutes of the day. Otherwise this would be very hard to plot correctly. And so we can move through the day, see the temperature through the day. And after the day is finished I put two blank lines. And that's very important because if you put two blank lines in your data it's treated as different blocks by GNU plot. And that's going to become very important shortly. So this is day two, time starts at zero again, and so on. And what we can do with this data set is we can bring up the statistical summary for it. So that's just done by the stats command. And you can give that summary a name. So I'm calling it capital A. You're going to see why we need a name in a second. And I press enter and something really strange happens. I see records 343 out of range 104,412. And that's because I set an X range and a Y range. But I don't want that because everything else that I see, for instance, the mean temperature, the maximum temperature, the minimum temperature is only within that range. As you can see, the minimum value is minus two, the maximum value is two. Well, that's because I set the range from minus two to two. So I'm quickly going to, sorry, unset X range, unset Y range and repeat the statistical summary. And now you see I have 104,755 good readings. So that's quite a large data set, but Knubot can deal with this without any problem at all. I have 726 blank lines, which separate the days, and I have 364 blocks, so these are the days. Uh, one day was incomplete, so I just cut it out completely. You can also see that the mean temperature in 2018 in Boulder seemed to be about 2.6 degrees Celsius. You can see more information, more statistical data about your data here. You also see the minimum value. And by the way, this is for the second column and this is for the first column in your data. So you can see the minimum temperature and you can see which data point it corresponds to and you can see the maximum temperature and which data point it corresponds to. And we even saved that statistical summary in this variable A. And the nice thing that you can do now is you can, for instance, set the X range and write A min X to A max X. So we set the range from the minimum to the maximum value in the data file. And we can do the same for the Y range. but maybe subtract one for the minimum value and add one for the maximum value. And that's very handy because you don't even need to know your data file, but you can already set your plot to an appropriate size so that your data fills up the window nicely. Now remember I said that whenever data is separated by two lines, two blank lines, it's treated as a separate block. And these blocks are referred to with indices. Now let's bring up the WXT terminal real quick and plot the data set and write index zero. And as you can see, that just gives the first day, the graph, the temperature for the first day, because that's the first block in the data set. Now I want to make this plot look a little better real quick. So I'm gonna set the border, the ticks no mirror, set the grid and set some custom labels. If any of this confuses you, please go watch my other videos where everything is explained in detail. All right, and we're gonna set some labels. And we're now ready to plot. So I'll just plot the first block once more to see how it looks. Let's just 
choose red as a color and increase the width a little bit. And I kind of like that, so we're now going to animate this. So set the terminal to GIF, animate, and I'm going to choose a delay of 20. Set output, temperature GIF, and write our do loop. Now, this time I'm going to start i at 0, since the index for the blocks starts at 0. And I'm going to increment it until I hit a sub blocks minus 1 converted to an integer. So you do not need to know how many blocks there actually are in your data. You can just increment i until you are at the number of blocks minus 1. And we're going to plot the block with index i now. With lines, line color 7, line width 2. And as a title, I would like to have the current day, so it should show something like day 1, day 2, and so on. So I write day, then I write this little dot, and then I can write i plus 1. So it calculates i plus 1, casts that into a string, and appends it to the string written before. So this should show the current day as a title. Then hit enter. And it takes a few seconds to process, but once we're done, we can open up that file, take a look at it. And as you can see, this is exactly the file that I presented at the beginning of the video. So I think that's really cool. Feel free to play around, see what animations you can come up with. If you haven't already, check out my other videos on GNUplot. If you liked what you saw, consider subscribing, and thanks for watching. See you next time.